ظهور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه ومختاره من خلقه وخليله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الله به الغمة وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى أتاه اليقين فاللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ونبينا وقرة أعيننا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون All gratitude belongs to Allah Whether we have the ability to thank him or whether we don't And yet we thank him, we seek his help and we seek his forgiveness Whoever Allah guides, none can lead astray And whoever is led astray as a result of their own intentions None can guide but Allah I testify that there is none worthy of my devotion, my ultimate love and my obedience but Allah and that Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, is his last and his final messenger. Allah reminds us in the Quran, believers be conscious of Allah as he deserves and do not die except upon pure submission to him. We have now entered into the month of Sha'ban, that month that precedes Ramadan. The month Ramadan, which our hearts and our bodies and our minds are looking forward to. The countdown has begun. But how are we going to prepare for this month? How are we going to prepare our souls and our hearts to make the best of this month? When people prepare for marathons, for races, for the Olympics, they spend months with agonizing preparation. Every detail no stone is left unturned so that in the five minutes you have to race and to run those are the best five minutes you have ever ran in your life what we don't want to happen is for us to wake up on the first day of ramadan with no plan in a haze confused and to zombie walk our way through the entire month only to stand on eid regretting the month that just went by but the preparation begins now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Qur'an وَأَعِدُّوا لَهُمْ مَسْتَطَعْتُمْ مِنْ قُوَّةٍ وَمِنْ رِبَاطِ الْخَيْلِ O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam If you're going to battle, make sure you prepare every bit of strength that you can for the battle that is ahead. Ramadan is a battle as well. It is not a physical battle with a physical enemy. But it is a battle with the greatest enemy, the enemy inside you and me. In Ramadan, we don't fight the shaitan. In Ramadan, we don't fight a person. But we fight the most difficult enemy which we struggle to fight with our entire lives is us, ourselves. How can we prepare for that battle? How can we ready ourselves for that battle? We know that the month we have just entered, the month of Sha'ban, the Prophet ﷺ would focus his preparations in this month. As it comes in Sahih Bukhari and Muslim that his wife, our mother Aisha radiallahu anha narrates that the Prophet ﷺ would never fast a month. He would fast like this month, the month of Sha'ban. And it come, as it comes in the hadith of Usama ibn Zayd, who narrates that the Prophet wasallam would fast almost the entire month. You never saw him fasting a month like this month. And in the words of the messenger himself, That is a month that slips many people by. Rajab wa Ramadan, the month between Rajab and Ramadan. فِيهِ يُرْفَعُ الْعَمَلُ إِلَى اللَّهِ In that month, our deeds are raised to Allah. وَأُحِبُّ أَنْ يُرْفَعَ عَمَلِي وَأَنَا صائم. And I love that my deeds be presented to Allah while I am fasting. And so this month, the physical preparation would begin. The Prophet ﷺ would fast the majority of this month, the month of Sha'ban. He would prepare. But... Is a preparation just a physical preparation? Or is there another type of preparation that we need to think about? 
When we think about our fast and we think about the month of Ramadan, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala interested? Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looking for you and me to be hungry and thirsty? Allah says in the Quran, لَن يَنَالَ اللَّهَ لُحُومُهَا وَلَا دِمَاؤُهَا When you slaughter an animal for Allah's sake, remember, the flesh and the blood does not go to Allah. وَلَكِنْ يَنَالُهُ التَّقْوَى مِنْكُمْ But it is the consciousness of Allah in your heart, that is what is going to Allah. When we fast, it is not the hunger and thirst that Allah wants from us, but He wants to see who amongst us is most conscious of Him, most fearful of Him, most loving of Him, most hoping of the reward from Him. And that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks for. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informs us, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَنظُرُ إِلَىٰ صُوَرِكُمْ Allah does not look at your outward forms, your image, your shape, your body, your physical features. وَلَا إِلَىٰ أَجْسَامِكُمْ And nor to your bodies. وَلَكِنْ يَنظُرُ إِلَىٰ قُلُوبِكُمْ وَأَعْمَالِكُمْ He looks at your hearts and your deeds. At this very moment in time, this very moment as you hear this, my voice speaking to you, if Allah were to look into your heart at this moment, what would He see? Does He see sincerity? Does He see humility? Does He see the love of Allah? Or does He see distraction? Does He see someone who's heedless? Someone who's forgetful of Him? Someone whose heart is not there in the worship? The preparation for Ramadan should not be a physical preparation. We have to prepare the heart. The battleground is in the heart. We know that this Quran, when it was revealed, a book did not drop out of the sky and slap, slam in front of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Rather, as Allah tells us in the Quran, نَزَلَ بِهِ الرُّوحُ الْأَمِينَ The trustworthy angel descended with it. عَلَىٰ قَلْبِكَ لِتَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُرْسَلِينَ and it was revealed to the heart of the messenger. The fight between right and wrong takes place in the heart. The fight between temptation and fear of Allah takes place in the heart. The fight between eating and not eating takes place in the heart. The heart is what we have to prepare. But how do we prepare this heart? What do we do to awaken this heart? I'm going to inshallah in this khutbah give you three steps Three steps for us to prepare this heart for Ramadan. The first thing, when you buy a second-hand car or a very old car and you get the car, it parks up in your driveway and you look at the wheels, the tires, they're full of rust. You can't drive the car. First, you need to get rid of the rust, the dirt. This heart, which we want to worship Allah with, fear Allah with, love Allah with, this heart is full of rust, of dirt, all around it. And because of that dirt, nothing goes in. You listen to the Quran, it doesn't go into your heart. You hear a reminder, it doesn't awaken you. This heart is dead. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes such a heart in the Quran. Their hearts became hard like rocks. But some rocks, even they can break open and the water of Iman can flow from it. When the Muslims migrated to Medina, after a long period of time, they became comfortable, they became safe. They became complacent, such that the reminders of the Qur'an didn't hit them like it used to. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds them, He shakes them in the Qur'an with His words. أَلَمْ يَأْنِ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَن تَخْشَعَ قُلُوبُهُمْ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Allah says, isn't it time for the believers that their hearts should tremble when Allah's name is mentioned. 
Does your heart tremble when the name of Allah is mentioned? When the Quran is recited? When the adhan is called? When the reminder is given? Because if our hearts do not tremor, they do not tremble, they do not shake for the name of Allah, then we have a dead heart. And we need this heart to be revived, to be resuscitated. We have already experienced heart failure, but not the physical kind, the spiritual kind. How do you revive the dead heart? Al-Qalbul Qasi That is so far from Allah The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells us the secret to awaken the heart He says مَثَلُ الَّذِي يَذْكُرُ اللَّهَ وَالَّذِي لَا يَذْكُرُ اللَّهَ كَمَثَلِ الْحَيِّ وَالْمَيِّتِ The example of someone who remembers Allah And one who doesn't remember Allah Is the difference between being alive and being dead when was the last time you and me remembered Allah? Many of us, we pray salah, but not for one moment in our salah, we are remembering connecting to Allah. Many of us recite the Quran, but not for a moment in the recitation have we connected with Allah. Our salah is empty. Our recitation is empty. We are mo making movements. We are doing aerobics, but we only have the form, but there's nothing inside. Something empty is being presented to Allah. And this is why the first step to revive the heart is to revive the practice of dhikrullah, to remember the name of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقُعُودًا وَعَلَىٰ جُنُوبِهِمْ those special people who think of Allah standing and sitting and lying on their sides. And they contemplate, they think about the heavens and the earth and they say, Oh Allah, you could not have made this for no reason. Remember Allah and Allah will mention your name amongst the angels. Nasullaha fanyasiyahum and the opposite, forget Allah and Allah will forget about you. Allah says, Whoever turns away from remembering me, they will live a miserable life, a sad life, a depressing life. And they will stand on the day of judgment blind in front of Allah. And we will say, Oh Allah, why did you resurrect me blind when I used to see with these eyes? Allah says, But didn't my signs come to you? But you forgot them. You ignored them. You did not remember them. Remember them. And today, so too, you will be forgotten. The remembrance of Allah is not an empty movement of the mouth. It is not the empty movements of the body, but it is an action of the heart. When the heart remembers our Creator. The one who sustains us and provides for us, who birthed us and who will take us back when we remember him and we appreciate him and we are comforted by him and we feel the fear of him. This is the reality of the remembrance of Allah, without which our salah is dead and our Quran is empty and everything we do has no meaning if it is not filled with the remembrance of Allah. This is the first step. Remember Allah in the morning and the evenings. Remember Him as you walk about your daily duties. Remember Allah when you're on your commute, driving, stuck in traffic. Remember Allah when you wake up in the morning, as you eat your breakfast, as you go on your daily duties. Do not let a moment of the day except your heart is thinking of Allah. And every time your tongue moves, and every time your lips shift to mention His name, know that Allah has mentioned your name amongst the angels. This is the first way to awaken the dead heart. The second, the second way to awaken the heart is to make tawbah to Allah, to ask Allah's forgiveness. Because the heart only becomes hard from one reason and one reason only. 
And that's not rust. And that's not dirt. That is the sins that we do. They make the heart hard. They make this heart like a rock. No Quran recitation can enter this heart. No remembrance of Allah takes place in this heart. Because of the sins that have taken place. Allah says in the Quran. Kalla bal rana ala qulubihim ma kanu yaksibun. No, their hearts have become hard because of the sins that they used to do. There is a reason why, my dear brothers and sisters, that nothing moves us anymore. That nothing reminds us of Allah anymore. There's a reason why we are cold. We are numb. It is because our sins have overwhelmed us. And this heart is now hard. What is going to break open this rock to let the flowing waters of the remembrance of Allah inside there is only one thing that can open this heart again, and that is to repent to Allah with a sincere repentance. Allah says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu tubu ila Allahi tawbatan nasuha. O believers, return to Allah with a sincere repentance. Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu He accepts Islam and he's a young man But he has so much baggage, so many sins, so many mistakes he made in his past This man radiallahu anhu It is only a matter of time Before it is narrated that he is able to read the whole Quran in one rak'ah One unit of prayer what is it that allowed him to reach such a height in his closeness to Allah, in his relationship with the Qur'an? It was his sincerity in his repentance to Allah. When he asked Allah's forgiveness, he asked Allah's forgiveness with tears in his eyes and a broken heart. When he asked Allah to forgive him with his repentance, he broke down in front of Allah on his knees and on his head. We know that when our father Adam السلام, returned to this dunya and descended, we know that the first thing he said to Allah. He learned some words to say to Allah to seek his forgiveness. Oh Allah, I have wronged myself. And if you don't forgive me and you don't have mercy on me, I will be a loser. If you want the Quran to be recited on your lips like a flowing river, if you want the reminders of Allah to break and touch your heart, start with repentance. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah li wa lakum fastaghfiruh. Innahu huwa tawwab rahim الحمد لله على إنعامه والشكر له لتفضله وامتنانه وسبحان الله والحمد لله تعظيما لشأنه وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على محمد وعلى آله وعلى صحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا إلى يوم الدين. We talked about preparing the heart for Ramadan in this beautiful month of Shaaban. We talked about reviving the remembrance of Allah in our heart. We talked about returning to Allah with a sincere repentance to break the chains of the heart. And last, but certainly not least, the third, but perhaps the most important step to prepare for Ramadan is to fast in this month, but to make sure the heart is fasting with the body. What do I mean by that? The Prophet ﷺ informed us. Whoever fasts in the month of Ramadan but does not leave idle speech, the wrong words, swearing, cussing, lying, Allah doesn't need them to be hungry and thirsty. This month, practice a different kind of fasting. If you fast on Monday or Thursday, if you fast the middle three days of the month, as the Prophet ﷺ would, every time you fast, write down one bad habit you are going to avoid today. Some of us have a mobile phone addiction. Some of us, we lie habitually. 
Some of us, we have a temper, an anger problem. Some of us, we curse, we swear, we use bad language. When you wake up for suhoor this month to prepare your fast for the fast of Ramadan, write down one habit that you are going to avoid today. Fast of the heart, not just the fast of the body. If you have a smoking problem, this is the month to start. If you have a, tem a temper problem, this is the month to start. If you are using your tongue in the way it shouldn't be used, or your eyes in the way it shouldn't be used, this is the month to practice. Don't just fast with your food and drink. Fast with the heart, because that is the best preparation for the month of Ramadan, the month to come. Last but not least, as we remember the way to prepare the heart, we should not forget that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that owns this heart. And we should not forget that the most common dua supplication of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was Allahumma ya muqallib al-qulub Oh Allah, you are the changer of hearts. Thabbit qalbi ala deenik. Make my heart firm upon your way of life. He knew that you can try everything in the book, but if Allah doesn't help you, your heart will remain distracted. Your heart will remain far. Your heart will remain unable to enjoy the sweetness of Ramadan. Let us begin this month by preparing for the month of Ramadan, the preparation of the hearts and the souls, not just the preparation of the bodies. Don't worry about the flour and the rice and the meal plan and the recipes and the special fried items we enjoy in Ramadan. Don't worry about all of that planning this month. Worry about the heart. Because on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to look inside that heart and see the true you and the true me. اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات المؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك ربنا سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات عباد الله اذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم وقوموا إلى صلاتكم يرحمكم الله الله أكبر الله أكبر شهد لا إله إلا الله شهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على السلام حي على الفلاح قد قام الإسلام قد قام الإسلام الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله استوى close the gaps please keep your phones on silent Allah Akbar Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Ar Rahmanir Rahim Malik Yawmiddin إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين سبح اسم ربك الأعلى الذي خلق فسوى والذي قدر فهدى والذي أخرج المرعى فجعله غثاء أحوى سنقرئك فلا تنسى إلا ما شاء الله إنه يعلم الجهر وما يخفى ونيسرك لليسرى فذكر إن نفعت الذكرى سيذكر من يخشى ويتجنبها الأشقى الذي يصلى النار الكبرى 
ثم لا يموت فيها ولا يحيا قد أفلح من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفي الصحف الأولى صحف إبراهيم وموسى الله سمع الله لمن حمده بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين هل أتاك حديث الغاشية وجوه يومئذ خاشعة عاملة ناصبة تصلى نارا حامية تسقى من عين آنية ليس لهم طعام إلا من ضريع لا يسمن ولا يغني من جوع وجوه يومئذ ناعمة لسعيها راضية في جنة عالية لا تسمع فيها لاغية الله الله لمن حمده الله
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله